Hi, my name is Dr. Leanne Wood. I work for the NKU Honors College, and here is the second part of the video about dropped quotations. In this video, we'll explain um, some other ways of fixing or correcting dropped quotations. So in our last video, we discussed the quote sandwich, a way of integrating quoted material into your own essays. Essentially, the first slice of bread in your quote sandwich is a way of introducing that quotation. Um, and then you have the quote itself, which is the filling of the sandwich. Here it's in boldface. You wouldn't actually use boldface in your writing. And then finally, a follow-up or an analysis of that quotation. So notice that the self-to-source ratio here is um, pretty good. There's actually more of the student writer than there is of the quoted material. All right, so that was one way of fixing a dropped quotation. Another way of correcting a dropped quotation is to use paraphrase. And paraphrasing is changing the language of an original piece of text into something that is perhaps easier to understand. Maybe it fits better into your own, um, your own writing. Maybe the original source used a lot of jargon. Um, in any event, paraphrase needs to change the word order. So you don't want to just go in and maybe use your thesaurus to swap out a word here and there. It really needs to be new sentences. Um, so here is an example in boldface of a way to paraphrase uh, that text or that, that idea from the writer Susan Bordeaux. And notice here that we've still cited it, right? So, so citations are still important even if you're paraphrasing or summarizing somebody else's ideas. Um, and a third solution for correcting a dropped quotation is to do what's called a block quotation. It's still kind of the same idea as a quote sandwich, um, but here you would actually, instead of using quotation marks around the quoted material, if it is long enough, you can indent it as its own standalone text. It still requires introducing the text. Here you notice the writer has introduced it with a colon, and it still requires follow-up analysis and discussion on your part. But um, block quotations are an option, especially if you've got a long-ish quotation to work with. Um, the length required for a block quotation varies depending on whether you're using MLA-style citation, APA, or Chicago-style, so be sure you check with your style guide on that. Finally, a couple of reminders, as I mentioned before, any kind of quotation or paraphrase or summary of somebody else's ideas requires a citation in the text. I really recommend that you cite as you write, even if it's just writing uh, the author's last name and the page number where you found it, that's enough information to come back and properly format everything later. Um, you want to keep your quotations concise. You don't want the author's voices that you're quoting to drown you out. Again, remember that self-to-source ratio where you want to have more of a voice in your papers than your sources do. And then finally, make sure that your quotations are relevant and they're really supporting the point that you're trying to make in a particular paragraph. Don't just throw in quotations for the sake of extending your paper or meeting a word count. Believe me, your professors will notice. Um, so those are just some quick reminders. I hope this was helpful in understanding some different ways to integrate source material into your writing, but to avoid the dreaded dropped quotation. Thanks for listening.